Hello, and welcome to The Exchange, brought to you by the New York Stock Exchange. I'm Douglas Jonas, your host. As a reminder, today's interview is for informational purposes only. The NYSE does not recommend investments or investment strategies. I am joined today by Bree Williams. Bree is the Head of Practice Management for State Street Spider ETFs. Bree, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. So, Bree, there has been a lot of attention, a lot of headlines all around ESG strategies, especially over the last year. It seems like they've garnered a lot of attention. Can you touch on where you believe things stand today and what barriers might still exist? You know, so I think, broadly speaking, ESG continues to be a significant force, one that's really shaping global capital markets. Um, it's really entered uh, what I think would be a mainstreaming phase, you know, after years of what has been foundational efforts in building and promoting ESG investing. So a couple of things to think about is, you know, you have the fiduciary aspect, which is important, but not only is the fiduciary aspect of ESG a key catalyst when it comes to growth and development, but you also see a rise in investors realizing that there's considerable investment risk of ignoring ESG. Uh, when we think about the growth, and let's put some numbers behind that, um, the market in 2020 for ESG funds set a record, as we all know. We saw a rapid pace continue in 2021. Um, when we look at the U.S. region, U.S. listed ESG exchange traded funds, last year they attracted 41 billion of net new inflows. Uh, globally, ESG investing has grown to 35 plus trillion dollars. I mean, that equals more than a third of the world's professionally managed assets. So I think it'd be fair to say that the velocity of ESG investing is certainly likely to continue and navigating that ESG journey is going to be rewarding on so many levels for investors. Yet, despite, you know, the momentum and the impressive growth, there are, of course, challenges that remain. I think one in particular that's worth highlighting, you know, is around ESG data. Um, there's some headwinds here, you know, whether that's just the sheer variety um, or in some cases, the inconsistency of ESG data. So when you think about, you know, how companies report the related information. So more work is needed there. Um, we should have consistency in our framework for how a company index provider and asset manager uh, do present their ESG reporting. But we shouldn't let those limitations that are available now get in our way and keep us on the sideline. I think you would agree with me that if we must not make the perfect, the enemy of the good on our journey here with ESJ. Such a big fans of that statement. Uh, Bree, now, of course, State Street Global Advisors, you just launched three new ESG ETFs with the New York Stock Exchange. Can you tell us about these new funds? Absolutely. We're very proud of our additional funds in our lineup. I mean, in general, for more than 35 years, we have investors that are leaning into our ESG strategies, be that a benchmark replacement, a unique satellite exposure, or as model building blocks. So on the 11th of January, we were able to expand our lineup. We have solutions now that provide exposures to small cap, international, and emerging market equities. Just to recap what those funds are, that's the Spider S&P Small Cap 600 ESG ETF, that ticker is ESIX. We have the Spider Bloomberg SASB Developed Markets XUS ESG Select ETF, that ticker is RDMX. And then we have the Spider Bloomberg SASB Emerging Markets ESG Select ETF, and that ticker is REMG. The investment approach for all three of these funds is primarily designed to emphasize firms that have more positive ESG traits relative to their peers that are based on specific levels of ESG criteria. So congratulations on the launches. Now, if, if an yeah. investor and advisor, they're looking at these ETFs, how should they be thinking about incorporating them in a portfolio? So first and foremost, when we think about the ESG solutions that we put forward, we wanna make sure that our focus is squarely on providing ETF solutions that are fit for purpose. We also wanna make sure that what we put into market reflects the diversity of investor objectives. And then last but not least, they're providing measurable impact in the pursuit of better outcomes. All three of these ETFs in our lineup as a whole do meet those objectives. Specific to the three new products that we are talking about, ESIX, RDMX, and REMG, those are could be utilized as ESG building blocks across their portfolio because each fund is going to provide access to a core asset class 
In this case, that's small cap international stocks or emerging market equities. And those make them very attractive benchmark replacements as model building blocks for the investor that's really looking to tap into the benefits of ESG investing across a broader range of asset allocation. With these three funds being added to our lineup, our suite now is 11. Spider ETFs that are designed to help investors focus in on the ESG aspects that are most important to what's their vision, what's their mission, and of course their investment goals with integrating ESG. If I want to be very specific in an example for you, when you think about putting our lineup to work in general, if we have a client that's passionate about replacing fossil fuels, as our example, they could utilize our core ESG solutions like the funds we were talking about, along with another broad uh, equity solution such as EFIV, which is our Spider S&P 500 ESG ETF, and complement those holdings with an allocation to CNRG, which is the Spider S&P Kencho Clean Power ETF. And, and Bri, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but, but if you're looking <laughs> forward and we think about 2022, are there expectations you have for ESG investing looking, looking into the future? We do, and I wish I did have that crystal ball. Um, if you have one, please let me borrow it. But we believe that we will see ESG flows continue to accelerate in 2022. And you know, with that growth, which has been quite rapid, you know, education in all things ESG is going to remain critical to our forward momentum, progress, and success here as an industry. I mean, the accelerated pace of developments in ESG is resetting expectations and it's pushing our industry towards the best standards of practice, which is a good thing. So some key considerations to be specific to your question at hand, you know, regulation. I think we have an evolving regulatory market that has greater recognition of some key issues such as growing climate change awareness. And you see policy action improving here. We talked about data. Uh, better data. The European Union is already making some good strides here towards better transparency and reporting around sustainable activities. And other parts of the world, including the US, are closely watching the impact of these changes. We also need to work on increasing awareness of the better risk adjusted returns ESG strategies can provide. And we also talked about, and we're contributing to the choice that's available to investors today. Uh, products into the market have been dynamic, and we've seen a lot more diversity in choice. So this growing product set is only going to help the investor integrate ESG considerations across a wider range of asset classes, which is a good thing too. And then when I think about our financial advisor community in particular, deeper engagement with the individual investor. There's a lot of interest here. We also see financial advisors no longer viewing ESG as this niche strategy. It's more comprehensive in their approach. They're taking the time to consider why their clients are interested in investing sustainably, and they're building portfolios that are tailored to their motivations, which are unique. ESG is not one size fits all, and meeting the goals that they have with ESG integration. Well, Bree, thank you so much for being here to share your insights. As a reminder, if you caught this episode live and you're looking for other ETF thought leadership, you can find it on our website, homeofetfs.com. That's homeofetfs.com, all brought to you by the New York Stock Exchange, the home of ESG, and also the home of ETFs.